So, Actix, what was Actix doing, or what is Actix doing? Uh, the company still exists, but I'm, uh, I've moved to another company. Um, so, what they were doing is, so what they're doing is machine and human communication in factories. So, basically, you have a bunch of nodes. Node can be a person or a machine or a server in the server rack, and they all want to talk to each other. Um, it's a distributed event sourcing system, so each node produces an event log, and you replicate these event logs to the other nodes, and then uh, every node has some kind of snap, uh, some kind of state which he can then analyze and draw conclusions from, basically. And the crucial part is that this should, system should be partition tolerant, so if uh, one node is not available, the thing should just carry on. And uh, that actually worked quite well. Um, so our needs at Actix. Um, one need that we had was uh, we want event storage for distributed systems, quite clear, yes. Um, um, so we want it to be partition tolerant. We want it to be local first. So basically every device should always be able to work even, the, even if you put it in a Faraday cage and it cannot communicate with the outside in any way, it should, should still at least be able to interact with the local state. Uh, I think that's very important. We have seen many projects today that mention this local first principles, and I think this is the way to go. Um, so we wanted to deploy this first um, in small private swarms, but then eventually also on the global IPFS. So in addition to all the other things, you also needed some kind of encryption because you don't want your machine data on the public IPFS in a public way. People just don't like that for some reason. Um, so, requirements further, it has to be content addressed. Uh, we want an append-only log, so we want to be able to append quickly to the end. Uh, we want it indexed by offset, so we should be say, uh, uh, able to say, give me message number 256 quickly. And we also, in addition, wanted to have a way to query all the events in a log by tags, which is the strings, basically. Um, and it should be compressed because machine data is very, very, uh, it's a lot of data sometimes, but it's also very repetitive. Imagine a temperature sensor. It shows like one temperature, then one second later it tells you the temperature is still the same. And if you have a few billion of those, then uh, you really need compression. Otherwise, it's just no fun at all. Um, and it has to be encrypted, as I just mentioned. So append-only lock, um, we need fast append. Uh, we need addressed by stable index, and we also want to be able to remove data at some point because we don't want the devices to run out of space. But when we do that, uh, we don't want the indexes to change. So you can say remove all events from zero to one million, but then the event number one million and one will still have that offset. It will not move to the front. That's an operation that's just not supported. And so this is the qu tricky part. We also wanted to have some kind of querying. So we want to say, give me all events that match a certain pattern, whatever, whatever it is. In our case, it was tags and time and stuff like that, but uh, the, the data structure itself is generic on what you want to query on. Uh, so you can define your own types, what you, want, what you want to be your data, what you want to be your keys, which is the indexed part, and what you want to be your summary. So how you want your keys to be summarized up the tree, basically. And yeah, so this is our, these were our needs again. We also need time ranges. There's another index and tags. And you can do a Boolean combination of all the above. So I mean, the typical querying thing. Um, encryption, so since eventually you want to put private data on public IPFS, we need encryption. But as I mentioned before, we also need compression. So what happens if we try co to compress encrypted data? Well, you can do it, but it doesn't work. It just the, the compression will be uh, not very good. <laughs> or your encryption algorithm is very shitty. Um, one of the th two things will be true. Um, so for encryption, we just use a f fast stream cipher. And uh, we have a, two different secrets for the keys and for the values. So you might say the values are private, but the keys are, so you can, can tell people they can query, but they need an additional key to get to the actual values. It's useful in some cases. And so now to the, to the compression. So obviously we have to compress, compress before we encrypt. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it doesn't work. And then this is something 
Uh, we use uh, Z standard from Facebook, uh, which is very, very good general purpose compression algorithm. And um, yeah, this is one thing you really want to do. If you have data that looks like that, XML version equals blah, 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 super verbose, uh, then you want to have a lot of stuff to put into your block. And if you have binary data, uh, your compression is not going to be able to do much. So you really want to um, determine your block size not on the size of the uncompressed data, but on the size of the compressed data. And that means you have to have a tight integration with the compression algorithm. So you cannot just say, hey, compress this, but you have to feed it chunks and then see when it's full, basically. Um, so that, that, that was the need. So the data structure I came up with is called Banyan. So there's a Banyan tree. It's a very interesting looking tree. And it has, um, well, it can, can get multiple roots. And at some point, the roots will be indistinguishable from the original root. So and that, I found that to be a nice, um, nice co coincidence. So what's Banyan? Banyan is a Rust crate. It is licensed uh, MRT and Apache, so the usual Rust license, basically. So you can use it, no problem. Um, the, the higher level parts of Actix are proprietary, but Banyan and IPFS Embed are public. Um, it's basically, it's a persistent sequence of key, key value pairs, where key and value are typed. Uh, you have fast access by index, and you have custom queries by summary. We heard this uh, before a few times. And in case of Actix, there's certain stuff in the keys, but you can define your own keys. Um, and you can delete ranges. So now, uh, so basically there's a value type. The value type is always a blob or CBOR. Um, so you can obviously put different stuff in the value type, but the, nevertheless, the value type is kind of opaque. Um, so, but one thing that is not opaque, it is CBOR, but if you have a link, uh, so you have a SID in your, in your blob, it will be scraped. So the data, the, the links need to be put outside the compressed block, otherwise IPFS wouldn't find the links. I mean, IPFS cannot find links in compressed and encrypted data. So um, you have a key type. This can be summarized, and again, links will be scraped. And you have a summary type. The summary type can be the same as a key type, but you can also have some other summary. Um, yeah, like imagine your key is a string and then your summary might want to be a set of strings or whatever. Um, and yeah, you ha uh, must be able to compute a summary from keys or you must be able to compute a summary from summaries. That's the two things you need to be able to do. And we have a link type. Now this is probably getting a bit interesting because our link type is not a SID. It can be a SID, but you can also use something else. For example, uh, this doesn't fit on the slide anymore, but imagine you have a tree and every single hash in the tree is going to use the same hash algorithm and the same, all the, all the other parameters. And then in, in, um, due to efficiency, you just store 30, 32 bytes of hash as your link. And then somewhere all the way up, you know all these, all these hashes are going to be SHA-256, whatever. Um, so this is how this is done in Rust. There's a, there's a trait, which this is a common uh, design um, pattern in Rust, where you have a trait which just allows you to set a bunch of types. And um, yeah, there's all these types that I just mentioned. And now let's um, look how the tree, stru tree structure looks like. So the goal is to be chunky. What I mean by chunky is that um, you want to pack as much as possible into a single node. Obviously, uh, within the limits of what Bitswap can handle, you want to pack as much as possible in a node. And so to, do, to allow that, nodes are always sequences. A node never contains a single value. It contains a sequence of values. A node as in a node that ends up in, on IPFS. And so level no, zero nodes are sequences of values. Level one nodes are sequences of keys. And level anything above one nodes are sequences of summaries. So that means that the data that you need often, because you need, to, uh, you need it for indexing or for querying, is farther up the tree than the data that you need rarely, like the, like the values. And if you need, the values have to go all the way down, but if you just need to figure out which values you need, you can do it further up in the, uh, in the tree. 
So and this is how the tree looks. I just draw, drew it on a whiteboard. So basically you have values. Th those are just sequences of blobs, of zero blobs. Then you have keys. Each key contain, contains multiple links to leaves. And for each leaf, it has the, the keys. So it's a, actually it's a sequence of sequences, if you, if you look at it uh, like that. And then corresponding to each sequence, it has a link. And then level two and above, you have summaries, which are again sequences of summaries. And you have a, a sequence of sequences of summaries. And for each summary sequence, there's a link to the, to the level below. And um, now the block format is seen from IPFS is pretty simple, because there's just not that much uh, that you can do, because most of the thing has to be in the, the encrypted part. So the block format is a number, which is just an offset in the stream. Then there's the vector of the SIDs. Basically, this is the extracted links of the content. Um, you, can, you can not have your cake and eat it too. Uh, if you want the links to be completely hidden, you cannot extract them, but then IPFS won't be able to do anything with it. So you have to extract them. If you don't want them extracted, just don't mark them with tag 42. Very simple. Uh, and then, obviously, you have the compressed and encrypted data. Um, now, I'm using a format called CBO42 that might be slightly controversial with people that like uh, IPLD. So what's CBO42? CBO42 is just CBO, as described in the RFC for CBO. But in addition, it uses tag 42, so you can identify links. Um, so why not DAX CBO? It's the obvious question. Yeah, so basically, DAX CBO to me feels a little bit like binary JSON. And I don't want JSON. I don't want uh, text JSON, but I also don't want binary JSON. I want to be able um, to use arbitrary things as dictionary keys and not just strings. Whenever I have to stringify something to put it in a map, I die a little inside, kind of. Um, and I find DAX CBO very limiting compared to straight CBO. I think there's nothing wrong with straight CBO. Just use it. It's, it's fine. Um, and there's a lot of effort done in, um, in uh, DAX CBO about canonicalization. And I don't care for that at all, because there's just one device writing this stuff. So the canonical stuff is whatever the device that writes the event has written. So there's not going to be any collisions or like matching or whatever. Um, so, but nevertheless, um, you can, of course, put DAX CBO data in Banyan. It's no problem at all. DAX CBO is valid CBO. It's also valid CBO with uh, uh, tag 42. So it will just work. Um, yeah. And, but you don't have to. You can also use CBO, which exceeds what is possible in uh, DAX CBO. And, yeah, that's the end of my talk. Uh, the rest, there's an example. It's just a big main function, which does three different things. First thing it does, it just uses Banyan as just a sequence of events. So what do you get uh, compared to like a, the typical thing to do a linked list? You get insanely good compression of your data because it's, it's packing multiple events um, into one block and then using C standard compression to, to get uh, rid of the redundancy. So you will get some very good compression um, compared to if you do the typical like DAC uh, linked data structure thing. And you also get lightning fast um, indexed access. But obviously, you don't get any queries because, well, you haven't de defined anything that you want to query on. Then the next thing is an example where you use Banyan like Actix does. So you have a um, predefined index types, which is tags and times and so on. And then there's also an example which allows you to use Banyan with a custom index type. It's a very simple, basically, your value is just a scalar value, an uh, integer or whatever. And your summary type is just a range, like a minimum and maximum. Uh, but this is the smallest possible example I could come up with uh, to show how you build something with a custom index. Yeah, and that is the end of my talk, I think.